Uh, so our next talk is Charming Your Home Network with Juju, and presenting that is Alex Lowe and Callahan Comex. All right. Thank you, and uh, welcome, and thank you, everyone, for coming to our talk. Um, like you said, I'm Callahan Kovacs, this is Alex Lowe, and we're here to talk to you about Charming Your Home Network with Juju. And a little bit about us before we get started. Uh, Alex and I are both software engineers at Canonical on the StarCraft team. And as you can see by the wildcard glob, uh, the StarCraft team works on CharmCraft, RockCraft, and SnapCraft. Uh, and these are all, of course, packaging tools used to package different things. Um, and just a quick overview of those, SnapCraft, um, which you're probably familiar with, is our most popular tool for packaging IoT and desktop applications. Uh, next, RockCraft is for packaging container images. Uh, so this is similar to using Docker to make a Docker image, except RockCraft makes OCI images. And most relevant to this presentation is CharmCraft, which is used for packaging server applications and the operations code for those applications. And we'll get into more detail about that shortly. Uh, but before we go any further, let's talk about you. Who are you? Um, perhaps you just want to run an application at home, uh, like a media server, and you're not particularly interested in the installation or the maintenance. Uh, you just want it to work. Uh, if this describes you then, then Juju and Charms are not the right tech stack. Uh, in this case, just use the app's recommended installation methods because they work, they have the most support, and they're the easiest to use. Um, so. We're not here encouraging you to move to Juju if you have something that already works. Uh, but perhaps you're someone who's heard about these technologies like Juju and Charms, and you wanna try these out at home and experiment with them, but you're not sure if it's even possible or what Charms you would deploy at home because when you look online, it's things like telco apps or uh, Grafana, things that maybe don't make too much sense to do at home. Uh, well, if you can relate with person two, uh, then you've come to the right talk. Uh, we're here to show you how you can experiment with Charms at Home with apps that you would actually use at home. In this presentation, we're going to demo Juju and LXD uh, to deploy some common home server apps. So we'll show Qubit Torrent, the Torrent client, OpenVPN as a VPN client, Home Assistant for home automation, and Jellyfin as a media server. And we're also going to show you how you can charm other applications and how to contribute to the ecosystem. Yeah, so a quick note on that. Um, uh, Juju has sort of two types of charms that you can run. You've got machine charms and Kubernetes charms, which are roughly what, uh, what they sound like. Machine charms can be virtual machines, uh, machine-like containers like uh, uh, with, with XD. They can even uh, run on bare metal hardware, just depending on, uh, on what, uh, when, what Juju backend you're using. Um, Kubernetes uh, 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 trams are specifically for a Kubernetes pod. So a, mach uh, a machine tram, you, the, the tram runs as root in, uh, uh, in this machine. You, uh, so you can install software, you can add repositories and uh, anything uh, that, that you need. The Kubernetes charms have access to Kubernetes. They can, do, uh, uh, they can manage co uh, containers and, uh, and images and uh, stuff like that. So it's a, uh, it's a difference be, uh, uh, betw uh, between a vendor agnostic all of my cloud VMs as code and vendor agnostic, all of my Kubernetes stuff uh, uh, as code, uh, but Juju can handle both of them. And a few disclaimers as well. Um, first, this is a proof of concept. This is relatively new area of interest and in the charms we created for this demo, there's plenty of missing features. Uh, and then second, the tools like Juju are certainly overkill for using at home. Uh, and that's okay, because that's not exactly the point. Uh, and speaking of Juju, let's talk more about it. Um, so Juju is an open source tool to deploy, integrate, and maintain cloud applications on any infrastructure. And when I say any infrastructure, I mean any infrastructure. Uh, as you can see, Juju is designed to run on many different backends. And this isn't even a complete list. 
And uh, it abstracts this. So when you write a charm, there's no backend specific code to deal with. Uh, the only exception to that rule is what Alex just described, is that there's two categories of charms, the machine charms and Kubernetes charms. Um, for our deployments, we chose LexD as the backend, and which is a tool to run containers and virtual machines. Some of the advantages of using this is that it's lightweight, it's easy to use, uh, but the downside is that its integration with Juju is primarily for local testing. Uh, so some of the features available in other backends aren't implemented for the LXD backend. And now Alex is going to show us how to bootstrap Juju with LXD. Yeah, so top right corner there, I'm going to be running HTOPS, uh, so you can uh, see what system resources it's running. I am going to do this inside of a brand new uh, Ubuntu 22.04 uh, uh, virtual machine. Can I play? Um, so, uh, so the first step is just cre uh, creating that virtual machine with four CPUs and, uh, and eight gigs of RAM. And you'll see it sometimes a 10x or whatever f uh, flashing, that's just because I don't want to bore you with my slow internet. So we've got, uh, we've got this machine. The first thing we, ne uh, we need to do is update to the latest LexD. Uh, the Ubuntu 22.04 comes uh, with the LTS version of LexD. Makes sense. So LTS Ubuntu comes with uh, uh, LTS uh, uh, LexD, but we do use some features that uh, that, uh, that are only available in newer versions. So just uh, uh, downloading that. The second thi uh, thing to do is to uh, to install Juju. And hey, look, it's a sn uh, it's a snap as well. So. Set, uh, pretty, pretty standard in, install so far. Um, I actually also have Juju running on uh, uh, on this laptop. So, uh, so if uh, if there are questions later on, I can I, I can do some live demo uh, there. Uh, Juju is a strictly conf uh, confined snap, uh, so comes uh, comes with all of the uh, the, ben uh, the pros and cons of, uh, uh, of that. Um, so I'm initializing uh, uh, LexD th uh, there, and then literally just running Juju Bootstrap LexD. This will create a um, this will uh, create a machine inside of uh, your, uh, your or a container ins inside of LexD, which actually runs the controller. One of the cool things about uh, uh, Juju is you don't need any additional in uh, infrastructure to uh, to manage these clouds. It will manage itself from within uh, what, whatever cloud you're, do, uh, you're doing. So that, that was it. We, we have ju uh, uh, Juju up and running on this blank machine. Now, what else is Juju? Uh, it's an orchestration engine for software operators or charms. And with that said, let's talk about charms. Imagine you want to deploy an application. There may be a lot of steps. You have to install it. Uh, update configuration files, and then enable and start services. And then when it comes time to upgrade that application, uh, you'll have another set of commands to run, uh, stopping the service, backing up configuration data, and then uh, doing the upgrade and restarting. And if you're doing those things often enough, you're probably going to write a script for them. Now, what if there's a way for everyone to come together and collaborate on those same scripts to operate an application? Uh, the scripts would be configurable and extensible. And what if there was a framework for those scripts to ensure that they were consistent and testable? Well, that's what a charm is. A charm is just a package of these operation scripts and tests. Uh, so in other words, charms are packaged operations code for an application. And this brings us to Charm Hub, which is the official repository for charms. Uh, it's similar to Docker Hub, but for charms. The source code for charms are hosted somewhere else, like GitHub or GitLab, uh, but the charms themselves are posted on Charm Hub, and Juju can automatically download charms uh, from Charm Hub when you're going to deploy. And finally, we have Charmcraft. Uh, Charmcraft is a tool to create, build, and publish your charms. So Charmcraft can create an initial template for your charm. It will build it in a clean and reproducible environment. 
Um, it will provide ways for you to test your charm and allows you to publish to Charm Hub. And it has the same user experience and design language as Snapcraft and Rockcraft, so if you're already familiar with one of those other tools, uh, you can quickly learn how to use Charmcraft. Let's look at what's inside a charm. Um, starting from scratch, Charmcraft init just creates a simple charm from a template. And first we have the charmcraft.yaml file. Uh, and this is where you define metadata, like the title and summary and description, but it's also where you define the build process. Uh, Charmcraft organizes the build process into a series of parts. Uh, for example, you could have a part that clones a Git repository and uh, builds a Go application from that, and another part that builds a Python application from code in the source directory here, and then you could package both those together in your charm. Um, now, even though you can do that, you probably won't. Uh, charms are definitely the simplest uh, artifact of all the craft applications the StarCraft team manages. Um, so even though it provides this flexible and customizable way, most charms don't do it. They just will have a single part uh, that uses the Python code and the source directory here. Uh, next are the license and readme files and requirements, which are self-explanatory enough, so I'll skip those. Um, and then we have the source directory where the operation code lives. And Alex is going to tell us more about that in a moment. Um, but finally, we have the tests. And when you first initialize a charm, these are just stubbed out tests. But this emphasizes that charms are built um, with good coding practices from the start. And coming soon, Charmcraft will have a way to do more comprehensive end-to-end -end tests as well. Yeah, so uh, this is a screenshot of my favorite text editor uh, with the OpenVPN charm that I'll be, uh, be demoing uh, later. Um, it's, it's just a pretty standard Pyth uh, uh, Python class there. The, the only real magic is here in the, uh, in the init where you use the uh, operator, fr uh, uh, operator framework that, uh, that Canonical provides to uh, uh, tell it to observe certain events. So Juju is, is for the event-based. In this case, uh, the events we're observing are the install event, the config change event, the start event, and the stop event, which is, I feel like those, those are all self-explanatory and, and kind of the, uh, the minimum set of what you want to be able to do, uh, uh, do uh, with a service. Um, Going into the uh, the uninstall, uh, some might notice that uh, that I'm literally using subprocess.run to uh, to do app get update. Again, this uh, uh, this charm is us basically a script that runs as, uh, as root for uh, it, uh, in your machine, and so. Uh, so OpenVPN is already in uh, in the Ubuntu repos for uh, for me. I don't need to do any uh, anything fancy to uh, to get OpenVPN uh, there. So why not just build on top of uh, uh, of what's already there? Everything else is ju uh, is just managing that uh, that systemd service and, uh, and handling things when uh, when you pass a change conf uh, configuration from some client. Uh, uh, well, some some administrator's client mach, uh, machine somewhere in the universe to uh, uh, to the to this charm. It, everything else is just you know system control start, system control control stop. You're, I'm sure I'm sure everyone's fam uh, fam uh, familiar with everything that's happening here. So we've got the uh, we've got that charm written. Now I'm going to uh, uh, package and deploy it. Same same structure on the on the screen that uh, uh, that I showed you before. Yeah, come on, network. <laughs> I, I I think f uh, funny cats deserve priority, so I I, I totally get that. <laughs> um, if we try just going back Come on. You 
could try the uh, just the Wi-Fi too, maybe. Yeah. I thought here. I thought that uh, connecting to the Ethernet was a great idea. But <laughs> well, I, I, I was on the Ethernet. I'm just uh, going to switch to Wi-Fi. I can hold that. Oh, there we go. Oh. Okay, so I'm literally running Charmcraft pack in the uh, in the directory. This sets up a container that uh, that has just a basic build envi uh, uh, environment. So first time you uh, you do that, it'll, it'll take a little bit of time, but that container d uh, does get re uh, reused. Took about uh, about a minute to uh, uh, to do an uh, an initial build there for, uh, for me. Then I add a model in Juju. Uh, for whatever I, uh, whatever I want to call the model and deploy it, I deployed it w uh, with a um, I, I deployed uh, KubeTorrent with, uh, with a bit of configuration. This varies from charm to charm, uh, so you'll have to look at the, uh, the charm docs. But that fired up a, uh, a LexD container for uh, for me, uh, installed uh, KubeTorrent and uh, set up the, uh, the web interface and, and everything. I got to set my uh, own username and password uh, there. And look, I'm downloading Ubuntu. Um, oh, so so in in that case, I was downloading the Ubuntu torrent. Sorry, um, the, uh, we do we uh, we support Ubuntu LTS, uh, CentOS seven, and Alma Linux nine currently uh, uh, as the machines that the, uh, that the trams can run on. So uh, and but then uh, it's. It's per backend how, uh, how that gets uh, gets downloaded. So like LexD will download the Ubuntu image once, and, and then we'll just use that to fire up new containers. Yeah. No, but we do. Uh, uh, but we will be happy to uh, uh, to ex accept PRs. I, I I am the maintainer for uh, for for Charmcraft. I, I'm definitely happy to uh, uh, to accept PRs on that front. So um, another example, let's say you want, uh, uh, now, now you've got your uh, BitTorrent uh, uh, client go, uh, going, you want to host some home videos for yourself and your, uh, uh, and, and, and your family, you know, some, some funny vi videos of, uh, of your cats. We've got Jellyfin uh, here al uh, already um, available. So this is, uh, I made a model, just e each model is, you know, key, uh, Things within a model interact. Things between models. Uh, there are additional la uh, layers to, the, uh, to that interaction. Um, so, uh, so I made a model. I deployed Jellyfin from Ch uh, 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 Charm Hub. It was uh, th uh, uh, three commands, and uh, as soon as it, uh, it, in this case, the Charm actually uses the official Jellyfin uh, app, uh, app repository. It adds that into the machine, and, th and then it installs uh, uh, Jellyfin. But, uh, but then, in the end, I've got, uh, I've got Jellyfin there. It defaults to using slash SRV, and we've also got uh, some other charms on, uh, online that, uh, uh, that let you uh, mount a network share to, uh, uh, to uh, slash SRV so, uh, so that you can use your home, uh, uh, home NAS to, uh, as the actual location for serving that. Now, one more thing is that, uh, that sometimes your ISP really, really hates Linux ISOs, and so they won't let you, uh, you, you use BitTorrent, because as we, as we all know, Linux ISOs are the only known use case for BitTorrent. So then you might, uh, uh, so then you might need to uh, set up OpenVPN and put, uh, put a VPN client on, on it. Can you rewind a little bit to uh, about 15 seconds in? Actually, pause there. Yeah, pause there, please. So, in the uh, in this case, I am installing the OpenVPN charm, 
and I'm telling it to deploy to machine zero, which is the same container that, uh, that already contains uh, my qubit torrent chart. So uh, when it's doing that, it will fire up uh, uh, OpenVPN just for, uh, uh, just for that container. You can play. Um, and it, it won't have, uh, affect any other machines in, uh, uh, in Juju or indeed the machine that's hosting it. So, uh, so now I can once, uh, once again download uh, uh, Ubuntu, but just checking that I'm using the tunnel inter uh, uh, interface. And the, uh, this will then get, uh, ma uh, make sure that qubit torrent uses that tunnel interface. That tunnel interface is being uh, set up by my conf uh, configured OpenVPN charm. And so when I uh, download uh, Ubuntu again, I'm very thankful to uh, uh, whoever was seeding the, uh, that Ubuntu ARM64 uh, uh, torrent that particular day because I downloaded it about 10 times. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm taking just a little moment to get a few pe uh, peers there, not revealing anyone's IP address, but um, the, uh, this presentation and the videos will be available so you can uh, check more thoroughly uh, later on. But all of this is going through, uh, through my VPN endpoint. None of, uh, none of that traffic is actually going directly to the stuff, just to, to prove that it's actually using the, uh, the, the VPN. That's kind of important. <laughs> all right. Um, and in this next demo, uh, we're going to be showing Home Assistant. Uh, the deployment is similar, but what we're going to show at this point is one of the limitations we ran into. Um, and with most backends with Juju, if you want to expose your application uh, to the network, you would configure the ports when you're building the charm, and then you type Juju expose when you're deploying it, and that would expose those ports uh, to the network. Um, unfortunately, that feature is not yet implemented for the LXD backend, um, so we kind of have to do this manually. Um, and so here, um, I deploy it, I immediately list my containers, and I see the first one, uh, which is where Juju itself is running as a controller. Uh, and then a moment later, uh, you can see it spawns up a new container, which is where it's going to deploy Home Assistant. Um, and all I'm doing is just doing a backend specific command here, so I'm exposing a port um, for this container. And then, I'll just do juju status and wait for it to finish installing. Um. In this particular case, uh, Callahan used the Home Assistant Snap. Yes, and I will, I'll talk about that too in a minute. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, and then Home Assistant is right there, so I'll just breeze through the setup and the login. And there you have it, Home Assistant, that's a charm. Um, and like Alex just mentioned, uh, oops, Home Assistant is available as a snap. So uh, one of the interesting things that you can do is if something is already snapped, it's really easy to charm uh, because all the work and the details are already taken care of there in the snap itself. Um, so if you're interested in charming something, I recommend you check if there's a snap for it already because uh, you could have it deployed in truly minutes. Yeah. Easiest way to, uh, to make a charm is to charm a snap. Second easiest way is to charm something that's, uh, that's already in the repos. So. Speaking of which, um, we're starting a little organization on GitHub. It's called Charming Cottage. Um, if anyone's f uh, familiar with Snapcrafters, I'm sure most people here are, are familiar with uh, Snapcrafters to some level. Um, we're kind of tr uh, trying to do the, uh, the same sort of thing, but only for charms for your home, uh, for, uh, for home stuff. If you, uh, if you want to tr uh, charm uh, something that you know, r uh, runs on big iron servers and, uh, and whatever, that's wonderful. Highly encourage it. Charming Cottage isn't the right place for it. If you want to charm, I don't know, Pi Hole, 
and, and uh, run a charmed version of, uh, of, uh, of Pi-hole uh, uh, for yourself. One good luck, uh, we both <laughs> failed to, uh, to properly try uh, and Pi-hole. It does a lot of really confusing stuff. Uh, but uh, but two, yes, this this is the the right place. We will be uh, we will be happy to uh, uh, to host that charm to uh, uh, to pr uh, provide help for uh, uh, for you. Any anything that you that you're wanting to do for like home use stuff, tr uh, charming cottage is is there. We've got discussion for, uh, uh, forums available, and. And yeah, if you if you if you want to play around with Juju on on your home network, this is this this is probably the easiest way to do it. And uh, all the charms we demoed and more, um, we already have on this organization. So with that said, thank you. Any questions? Yes. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thanks. So just had a question about how uh, someone coming from the enterprise where we don't, you know, unfortunately we don't use a lot of, you know, fancy tools, um, how would somebody integrate something like this? So I saw that you guys talked about Azure. Uh, how, would, how would this all integrate? So um, Juju is it is basically a level above your uh, your cloud, if you, uh, if you will. So, let's say you've got a bunch of stuff, uh, both in Azure Kubernetes and as a bunch of Azure uh, uh, Azure virtual machines. You can bootstrap a Juju instance in your uh, in your Azure stuff, and you can start migrating VMs and, and Kubernetes pods in uh, into Juju, which w uh, which is a matter of Making sure they're pro uh, they're properly defined for uh, uh, for Juju so, uh, so that Juju knows what uh, what's going on with, uh, with them, and then just telling Juju and manage this by uh, with, uh, by deploying the charm. Easiest way to do that, on, uh, honestly, is get, uh, get charms of, uh, of of what you're, you're doing, deploy a new a, a new machine with the charm uh, uh, version of it that, and the, uh, and then just uh, migrate over. But that can all happen ins inside of that same cloud. Um, yeah, and uh, to build on that too, I think that one of the goals with this too is that it is hard to like bring something new uh, to the workplace. Um, and so many of these like open source tools, it's things that developers play with at home, and then they want to bring it to the workplace. Um, and yeah, yeah, it can be very challenging. Yeah, especially with the uh, bigger tools like this. Yeah, the the point of Charming Cottage uh, is to get you familiar with the Juju tools and uh, and stuff like that. So, uh, in honestly a low stakes environment, because if if you me uh, mess up your personal stri uh, streaming s uh, server, well done. You can't watch the, uh, uh, that home video again tonight. So. <laughs> I noticed when you were doing the, the charm craft in it that it created a good amount of Python files. Is Python the only language that is supported by that? So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so um, I'm going to say yes and no. Um, py uh, Python is the, uh, it is the mo uh, most widely used w uh, way of doing it, and like the operator framework is written in Python for uh, uh, for, uh, for Python objects, uh, uh, stuff like that. But uh, but you know how an OCI image is ju uh, it, uh, is just a uh, it, it's just a fancy tarball with the different layers. Uh, a charm is a fancy zip file with uh, with. Each of the, uh, each of the events being any executable that can, uh, that can run on the, uh, on that system, so we there are we, we have charms like that are still running within Canonical that uh, that are a set of Bash scripts within a zip file and the, and then a couple of YAML files to, uh, to give the met, uh, the metadata. You can uh, you can do that if you wanted to. You could uh, uh, you could uh, write the actual event software for your charm in Go or Rust or whatever. And Charmcraft can pack all of that for you. It will be a little bit 
steeper, uh, uh, steeper learning curve. I would recommend that for one's f uh, uh, first terms at least, use, use the operator framework and, uh, and uh, what's provided. But once, you, once you're familiar, um, please do weird stuff with Charmcraft. Please, br uh, please break it in weird and wonderful ways and please uh, send me ma uh, uh, many very detailed bug reports. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I definitely will agree with your uh, comment there, where you can do like bash-based scripts, um, but basically, you know, you have like a dispatch script inside your charm, and then you can write that in any language you want. But um, I do find the one benefit of like using like the operator framework and using Python is that it's very easy for like other people who are familiar with charms to contribute, because um, you basically have a common standard language for being able to kind of collaborate together. So you know. Start hooks behave the same way, um, configure hooks, all that, and even custom events as well. So um, one thing that's really interesting about charms is that they can basically share libraries. So similar to say like uh, Python package dependencies almost, they can share libraries. And then let's say like, you know, you want to integrate like an identity server, or, like you want to have, I don't know, Linux users for all your family members in your house. Um, you could then like take a library from like one of those LDAP charms and then you could put it in like your home assistant or something like that, and then they would be able to kind of speak a common language that allows them to be able to configure and kind of mount um, the, yes. But I also did actually have a question, but I want to know how long did it take you to put together all the videos and the charms for the home assistant and whatnot? Um, the charms t uh, uh, took, uh, took us a little while because uh, we, uh, we were, Experimenting with uh, with, uh, with a lot of stuff, the uh, the videos that uh, that that I did, I did all of that in a weekend. Yeah, we um, we have tried quite a bit. Uh, Alex spent a bit of time using OpenStack or trying to set up OpenStack for this as well. Um, and I struggled to get open, uh, OpenStack running at, at at home, but then again, this is also someone who has managed to install. Gen 2, but not Arch or, uh, or SUSE, so. So I noticed you, Charmcraft in it also creates some unit tests and some integration tests, just some boilerplates for those. Um, are those ran when you're creating the charm? Or are those ran when you're actually deploying it? When are those ran and, and what are the use cases for those really? Yeah. So uh, the full template for, uh, that Charmcraft in, uh, in it gives you it includes a um, tox.ini file with that a pre, uh, preset to uh, to run your unit and integration tests there. It also includes uh, uh, static linting uh, with Rough and uh, MyPy. Is it MyPy or PyWrite? I think we use PyWrite on it. I'm not sure. Um, uh, so, uh, so that's uh, so you would use Tox to uh, to run those. Uh, we have an upcoming f uh, uh, feature that, that'll be a, a Charmcraft test command, we, uh, which uh, will then run not just the, uh, those unit and integration tests, but uh, developer-defined end-to-end tests where you have the packed tr uh, uh, charm and uh, and your uh, Running that in, in, inside of a Juju environment, do, uh, doing certain poking at it, uh, etc. To uh, extend on what uh, on what Jason was uh, was talking about, to um, I am currently tr uh, trying to s uh, uh, figure out how to detach Jellyfin from its database so that I can use the charmed version uh, of uh, MySQL or, uh, or Postgres as the database for, uh, uh, for the Jellyfin charm. And I'll be, use, be using the, the, uh, the database integration li uh, libraries for, uh, for that, so that I can you know, run, the, uh, run the database on a separate machine. Yeah. And um, yeah. Uh, the more detaching of such things that you do, uh, aren't you running into the possibility of getting to situations that the original vendor had never in, in their life tested for? I am. Um, this, is, this, was, this is why we, uh, we gave that uh, caveat up, uh, uh, up front. Um, none, of the, uh, none of the projects that we're, do, uh, that we're doing this for uh, are, I, maybe one of them's aware of it. We certainly haven't uh, uh, t 
uh, told in, uh, at any of them, hey, we're tr uh, trying to do this, and we're not trying to make this, this the official way, uh, way to do it. I'm, uh, I'm doing that for my own interest in, uh, in, uh, in using that for, uh, for Jellyfin, not... I've heard that home assistant people have, can, can be rather belligerent against people who are trying to repackage their software. Yeah, we've uh, we've we've seen that, and we're, uh, what we are trying to work, uh, uh, to work with on things that are as big and complex uh, as uh, Home Assistant and, and uh, as Pi-hole is rather th uh, rather than trying to repackage the, uh, uh, what what they do at, uh, every time, work uh, work more on providing this charm that will use the their official packaging if, if at all possible. So um, I've got a work in progress for uh, uh, for uh, for Pi-hole that actually uh, uses their install script in, uh, uh, in, inside of the charm. Um, the, their install script is very much designed to uh, to be user, uh, user interactive, and charms are very much not. So, uh, so I'm doing some weird ha uh, uh, hacky work to uh, to work around that, but um, but. Our, the, the 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 preference is is definitely try try to use as much of the official stuff as as possible, and charms are a way to wrap that into so, uh, something that is fairly standardized. Any other questions? All right. Well, oh, awesome. thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, folks.